Thank you very much, John. Uh, bienvenue à Montréal. We're, this is our second time in Montréal, um, and uh, uh, it does represent a departure for us to have our forum uh, from these last few years when we've been uh, located in Ottawa. Uh, I'm happy to report that we have uh, more registration than we had before, so we didn't lose from the uh, transition, and of course we're delighted to be in this uh, wonderful city uh, and to have um, some additional friends from Quebec here. Uh, to join us. Uh, I want to welcome all of the fellows, of course, uh, but in particular the new fellows. We have 32 of our 36 uh, people who will be inducted this evening who are attending the meeting, and we're just delighted to have you present uh, and participating. We look forward to your input into what will be an exciting day. I also want to welcome our uh, representatives from our sponsors and some guests who are here. And I'm, I can't see around the room exactly who's here. I know Jennifer Blake is here from the Society of Obstetricians and Gynecologists of Canada with a particular interest in the issues around maternal and child health and uh, indigenous uh, health and well-being. Uh, Maurice Lassonde is here from the Royal Society, and I don't know if Maurice is in the room yet, but she's attending as a guest. Uh, and there, there are uh, Michael Dan is here somewhere in the room. Back there, thank you. Uh, we're delighted to have you here, Michael, as well. Uh, and uh, again, there are a number of people here who represent the very generous sponsors that are supporting today's event. Um, the co-chairs uh, are uh, humble people who are not going to put themselves forward to say how much work they've put into preparing what looks like a very exciting day for us. But I will say on their behalf, it's been an immense amount of effort. Uh, Jeff and John have, have um, really risen to the occasion, have done a tremendous amount of, of work, uh, uh, not only conceptually, but, uh, but some of the bulwark as well in terms of connecting with people and inviting, uh, successfully inviting people to participate uh, in a, a very complex uh, area of endeavor, and it's not an accident that we've uh, chosen the title that we've chosen. Uh, we did this right at the beginning, uh, and uh, we very purposely have called it Solutions to Inequities. This is not going to be a recital of all of the problems that have existed uh, over the last 150 years in Canada and longer elsewhere in terms of Indigenous health, but rather to look very specifically at uh, how can we do things differently, how can we make things better, uh, and what, how can we inform ourselves as a group of, of academics as to what our role is and how can we then participate in, again, improving the situation going forward. That's the intent of the day uh, at, uh, as the kind of overall aim. A more specific aim from the point of view of the academy is to define, uh, if we can during the day, uh, some of the areas where a deep dive by way of an assessment or calling together a group of experts under the auspices of the Canadian Academy of Health Sciences could advance the, 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 uh, the agenda in terms of, of Indigenous health uh, in this country and internationally. Uh, and so we're going to ask you to listen during the day to the various presentations and to ask questions accordingly in the discussion and then ultimately towards the end of the day to uh, put, uh, put your minds to how can we define or what, what might we define as uh, more particular questions uh, where further evidence that could be adduced from the existing literature, gray literature and so on, from experience elsewhere, uh, would help us to, uh, to uh, move the agenda forward, recognizing that our role as an academy is as evidence brokers. We, we bring evidence forward um, to those who would make policy. The timeliness of this particular conversation, again, I don't think needs underlining. Um, we, when we decided on this topic for 2016, it was with the knowledge uh, that the preliminary report of the Truth and Re Reconciliation Commission had already been received and that the final report would uh, would come out uh, while we were preparing the meeting. And, uh, and so again, we are informed by uh, we will be informed by the results of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission report in terms of looking at how do we as um, academics, as health professionals across the health disciplines 
inter interact with those recommendations and uh, make them live. Uh, what what is our role? How can we um, assist that process? So it's an important day. It is in fact a uh, a day that will be. Um, uh, we think will have long-term ramifications. Uh, we know that uh, there's tremendous interest from government in the kinds of things that we are going to be discussing uh, as they uh, look uh, federally and uh, indeed provincially at um, um, how to how make things different. And I, I hesitate to use that overused word transformative, uh, but in fact, uh, my hope would be that the conversations that we have will lead us to some transformative um, ideas in terms of um, what we do going forward. So uh, on that note, um, I am delighted that we have uh, with us today Alain Baudet from the Canadian Institutes of Health Research. Uh, Alain will uh, be bringing greetings from uh, CIHR, but also uh, we have an opportunity here hot off the press, some results from a recent meeting around uh, Aboriginal health research, uh, which uh, has just occurred um, and uh, was the basis on which we thought it would be helpful to this group to have, uh, uh, beyond just a greetings, to have uh, Alain uh, have a few words with us this morning. So I'm delighted to introduce uh, Le President de um, CIHR. Uh, uh, Alain Baudet uh, to address us. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Bonjour à tous. It's a real pleasure to be here today. And uh, I want to start by congratulating uh, the Academy of the Canadian Academy of Health Sciences for devoting this full day of its annual meeting to a forum on solutions to inequities uh, in Indigenous health. Uh, for, as, as you all know, the topic is a critical one. Uh, indeed, many Canadian Indigenous communities are living in, in a real state of crisis. Just a few examples. Some Indigenous communities have tuberculosis rates that are 400 times the rates of non-Indigenous communities. And some Inuit communities have 40 times the suicide rates of non-Inuit communities. Obesity, hypertension, diabetes are on the rise, with rates that are akin to those of low- and middle-income countries. For example, obesity rates exceed 26% among First Nations people, 22% among Métis, and 26% in Inuit, compared with 16% for non-Indigenous Canadians. Smoking rates are also over two times higher among Indigenous groups than in non-Indigenous population, leading to increased incidence of chronic lung diseases and cancer. And all this in a developed country, a proud member of the select group of G7 countries, and a country that's particularly proud of its universal healthcare system. J'apprécie particulièrement que le forum d'aujourd'hui soit axé sur des solutions. J'ai trop souvent entendu des groupes autochtones se plaindre de faire l'objet d'innombrables études dont ils n'apprennent ni les résultats et dont ils ne bénéficient pas des résultats. Cette situation doit changer. Il est temps de passer de l'observation à l'intervention. Et la recherche a un rôle clé à jouer, non seulement pour la découverte, mais aussi pour l'adoption de solutions innovantes. C'est ce que les IRSC ont reconnu il y a déjà plusieurs années maintenant, en créant un institut spécifiquement dédié à la santé des Autochtones. Cet institut était à l'époque, et est toujours aujourd'hui, le seul institut au monde en santé, qui se soit voué à améliorer spécifiquement la santé des populations autochtones. Par sa vision, sa mission et ses valeurs, l'Institut de la santé des autochtones vise à atteindre un équilibre entre les systèmes de connaissances autochtones et la science occidentale, tant pour la recherche sur la santé des Premières Nations, des Inuits et des Métis, que dans l'application des stratégies pour éliminer les inégalités et améliorer globalement la santé des Autochtones. 
I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the presence here today of CIHR's inaugural scientific director of the Institute of Aboriginal People's Health, Dr. Jeff Fredding, our co-chair, and also that of his successor and the Institute's current uh, director, Dr. Malcolm King, who will be delivering one of this morning's keynote addresses. It is customary to attribute to CIHR's uh, Indigenous People's Health all of the organization's investment in the area of Indigenous Peoples research. But it is not the case. It's important to know that actually investments from the strategic budget of the Institute represent less than 28% of all CIHR's investment in the area of Indigenous Peoples Health. Indeed, CIHR has made Indigenous Health one of its top research priorities in the last two five-year strategic plans, and its investments in this field have increased accordingly, growing from 2.14 million in 2001 to 30.8 million in 2014, in the face, as you well know, of a stagnating CIHR budget since 2007. We have, for instance, dedicated 25 million over 10 years to the Pathways to Health Equity for Aboriginal People's Health, a strategic initiative which applies implementation research and delivery science to developing multi-level and scalable interventions to reduce health inequities amongst Indigenous peoples. These investments have led to a significant buildup of research capacity with the proportion of researchers working on Indigenous people's health growing from 1% to 10% of all CIHR-funded researchers between 2000 and 2015. Pour veiller à ce que les chercheurs continuent d'œuvrer dans le domaine, mais surtout pour s'assurer qu'ils y réussissent, nous avons récemment créé et lancé un programme de réseau de mentorat autochtone. L'objectif de ce réseau est de favoriser l'interconnectivité des chercheurs autochtones, de permettre aux mentors de parfaire leurs compétences et d'accroître la capacité de mentorat des chercheurs en santé communautaire. Nous commençons à mesurer l'impact de ce que nous avons financé dans le domaine de la santé des autochtones. Par exemple, l'étude du chercheur Gonzalo Alvarez et de ses collègues à l'Université d'Ottawa a révélé qu'une campagne de porte-à-porte -porte visant à sensibiliser les résidents d'Ikaluit au dépistage de la tuberculose a contribué de façon significative à réduire l'incidence de la maladie dans certaines communautés autochtones du Nord. Cette même équipe a démontré qu'un test automatisé d'amplification PCR à cartouche en temps réel permettait de diagnostiquer plus rapidement la maladie dans les régions éloignées là où il n'existe aucun laboratoire offrant des tests de dépistage et là où les taux de la tuberculose sont les plus élevés au Canada. Despite our undeniable progress in closing disparity gaps, much remains to be done. And the time has never been more propitious for taking action. As was reminded, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission has released its report on the impact of the residential school system on Canada including 94 calls for action, six of which are focused on health. The Supreme Court of Canada has ruled that Métis people and non-status Indians should be recognized under the Indian Act. The Minister of Indigenous Affairs, Carolyn Bennett, has announced Canada's commitment to uphold the principles of the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples at the UN Forum. CIHR has heard the clear and firm commitments made by the current government to close the gaps with the indigenous communities, while at the same time articulating the need for evidence-based policy. Already, CIHR has taken a number of measures to tackle these issues. To reinforce our commitment to integrate indigenous perspectives, nothing for us without us, into health and health research, we have established a new CIHR-wide Institute Advisory Board on Indigenous People's Health, where the majority of the members are Indigenous. Actually, virtually all the members are Indigenous. This IB will be chaired by Jeff Sear, former Executive Director of the National Association of Friendship Center. Also, as alluded to by Carol, CIHR's Governing Council has dedicated the whole two days of its latest retreat 
to reflect on the organization's past and future actions in indigenous health research. It has done so with the participation of representatives from the Assembly of First Nations, Métis National Council, Inuit Tapirtlit Kanatomi, Aboriginal Health Research Steering Committee, Indigenous and Northern Affairs Canada, and other stakeholders. So we didn't do that in a silo. At this meeting, Council recommended to further fostering the advancement of a national health research agenda to improve and promote the health of First Nations, Inuit and Métis people in Canada through research, knowledge translation, and capacity building. A full action plan will be released later this year, but already steps have been taken to one, develop a common understanding and definition of indigenous health research. What is indigenous health research? Second, adopt principles of indigenous health research that build on tri-council priorities, the work on the truth of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, and the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. And three, inform culturally appropriate approaches to peer review through the mobilization of an indigenous co-led reference group. CIHR has a unique opportunity. In fact, I would say, a true, true, true timely opportunity to be a change agent, transformative is the word you use, in matters of indigenous people's health. Canada's First Nations, Inuit and Métis people have an enormous resilience and strength. It is our belief at CIHR that by working alongside with our indigenous partners, we can support research that will have significant impact not only in improving indigenous health outcomes, but also in strengthening indigenous leadership capacity. Canadians do not expect less from us. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup.